Well, I am excited today. I've got some upgrades I have been wanting to get to, and I've just not been able to order parts in until just recently. So I've got the parts in now, and I'm going to get to those uh, in just a moment. should be pretty quick, but before I do that, I'm just going to enjoy a bit of coffee. Well, I apologize about the noisy area we're in here. Uh, I decided to do this work at a local hardware store, which is right near a freeway and right off of a busy city street. So it's gonna be a little noisy, but I do like to do upgrades and work on the van when I am near a place that I can get parts and things if I need to. So if I need a little screw or something, I can just run in and buy at the hardware store. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna tackle are putting in some new filters in my homemade Berkey water filter. And these are knockoff Berkey filters. And I just searched around and found these. These were about $40 on Amazon uh, versus about $140 from a uh, Berkey reseller for proper uh, Berkey filters. And I'm gonna give these a go because I talked to some friends of mine that bought some uh, knockoff Berkey filters and they've been really happy with them. Looking at them, they look very much like a real Berkey filter. There's some slight differences in the construction of them, but looking at them, the feel of them, the look at them, everything just seems like they are going to work and they're gonna be just fine. And they came packaged really well in some foam and a double box, so I'm really happy with how they showed up, because uh, that's always a question from me. I don't normally like to order from Amazon, especially things that are, or can be uh, fragile, like these Berkey filters. And then the other thing is a USB-C charge uh, port. And this is a little different style one that I just found recently. And we'll talk about that when I get into it. Now, my only concern today is, as you can see, we've got not a cloud in the sky, bright sun, and it's supposed to be 90 degrees today. So uh, maybe a little bit too warm for me. So I'm gonna try to work as quick as I can and hopefully I don't get overheated. But I am enjoying all this sun and all this nice, nice summer weather. So the filters I was using before were much smaller. These new filters are taller. My old filters were seven inches long and these are nine inches long or just about. So they won't fit in the bucket and be able to put the lid on. After looking at options, I was thinking about using different buckets. Um, and I just decided I'm just gonna do this the cheap way for right now. I went back to the restaurant supply store, bought a new bucket, a new lid, um, and this container is gonna be tall enough for me to put the new filter in and be able to put the lid on. So this is the way I'm gonna do it, just because it's the easiest and simplest way to go and the cheapest way to go. So I'm just gonna remove this old bucket and replace it with a new one. And all I need to do is drill two holes in the bottom of this bucket and I'm actually going to utilize the old uh, top so I won't have to drill too many holes it's going to be pretty simple and I've done a little bit of work on the bottom bucket as well uh, my old spigot uh, started to leak so I found a new spigot at a health food store and it's plastic but it's fine it's it was cheap and it was available I really don't like ordering stuff online unless I have to so if I can find something that is easily available, I'm gonna do this. And so that's that's what I did. I uh, was in the health food store anyway buying groceries and so this was a nice find. Uh, that was Eureka Health Foods, uh, or Eureka Natural Foods down in Eureka and McKinleyville. They have two locations. So just wanna give them a little shout out because they're a really nice store. And it was nice to be able to find something that I needed while I was doing my shopping what I like to do versus ordering from big bad Amazon. Now if you do use these restaurant containers they are really thin plastic so you do need to really take your time and drill slowly uh, because it's very easy to uh, break these and splinter them. Uh, the last time I did this I didn't have the correct drill bit and I just carried on with the wrong drill bit and caused myself a little bit of grief. So this time I made sure to have the correct drill bit or you know, a better drill bit. So this is a step drill bit from uh, Harbor Freight. You can get them all over, but Harbor Freight has them 
at a fairly good price. The other thing is you want to make sure you just take your pocket knife and deburr the edges on these because if they're not clean they won't obviously seal very well because this is supposed to be watertight. Well taking a look at this I decided to go ahead and use the new lid. I want a little more spacing here because these filters are a little bit bigger all the way around than the old ones. So I just want a little more space in between them so I can clean them a little bit easier without having to take them out of the bucket themselves. So I just made a little more work for myself right now by making a new lid. Well, I'm about to make a new lid, but I think it'll help in the long run to make it easier to clean these going forward. Well, I got the lid drilled and it's, uh, it's pretty well lined up with the original holes. I think it'll be close enough. Um, they're slightly off. That's just kind of kind of how I work. Um, but close enough. It's plastic. It'll flex a little bit. Okay, got this all together. I'm just going to snap this on top, put some water in it, and let it drip through, check for leaks, and uh, dump out the first bit of water that goes through because there's always a little bit of uh, contamination there. And from the looks of it, I have one other thing I'm going to need to do to this setup, but we'll see how it goes. I'm actually not feeling so uh, hot out. I it just doesn't feel like it's 90 degrees yet, but the day has just started. Okay, so here's my next little project. This is a charger that is designed for motorcycles. And if you have a motorcycle, you probably know about these. I'm not a biker, so I have just found out about these little chargers. Now, this is an easy way for somebody with a motorcycle to add a USB port onto their bike so that they could charge their phone or their uh, navigation system or something. Uh, most bikes are not in use year round. So uh, in order for them to keep their battery from being depleted, they have a little cable much like this that is hooked onto their battery on one side and then it has one of these SAE cables on the other. So the idea with this uh, charger is that since most bikes already have one of these cables hooked up to their battery, this would just hook up to that cable and would give you a way to keep your phone charged while you're riding around. Uh, I already have a USB outlet here and I've got it on this little switch here and it, it's it's nice it, it works uh, except that USB regular USB is really an outdated cable it's just too slow for most of my devices like my iPad. If my iPad is depleted it'll take most of the day for uh, me to charge my iPad on this regular old outdated USB. So I need an updated USB-C uh, port and that's what this gives me. Now this also has a USB-A port like I already have which I'm not crazy about but I really just want this USB-C port and it's going to be quite easy for me to update this because all I've got to do is put this on my battery and I can plug this in and have a good fast USB C ports available to me. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I bought this pigtail so that I can have a little extension on this cable here. Uh, this, I want it to be slightly longer because I want to be able to move this around so that uh, I have a little longer uh, reach on my USB-C cord so that that way I don't have to buy long USB-C cables if I don't need to. I can just make up that extra reach with the charger itself. I thought that was cool about this. Um, I also want a way to unplug this just in case this has some phantom draw and it does have a little on off switch on it. Uh, it also has a little battery meter on it. We'll see if that works as well. So some questions on this but uh, as long as I can unplug it if I need to uh, I think that that's the best way to go and the only thing is not quite sure if these ring terminals are going to fit. So I do have some new ring terminals here that should fit my battery and I'm also going to need to just splice on a fuse holder. 
uh, just because it's just a safe idea to uh, have a fuse as close to your battery as possible. One thing that I wish someone would have taught me, I just recently learned it within the last year or so, is that when you're using crimpers and you're crimping on connectors, whether they be these butt connectors like I'm using here or these ring terminals, you need to resist the urge to twist the wires together because the way these connectors work is they pinch down over the wires and if you've twisted them together they can't pinch and grab on so just leave the wires straight don't twist them together like I did for years and years and you'll find that you'll have much better success when you're crimping these okay so I've got my pigtail installed and just because I'm not so great at electrical work. I've got my meter here and I'm just going to test and see if we've got voltage. And that is a good result. We've got voltage here. So I know that this is now live and that means as soon as I plug this in, this should be operational. It is. At least it looks like it. And it seems like the voltage meter on this is about the same as my voltmeter was telling me, so it's all looking pretty good. Um, I'll plug something into here and just make sure it's actually working as a quick charger, but this is great. And I've got lots of extra cable length here so I can move this all the way around. I'm hoping to have enough length to actually go up into my cab because every once in a while I need to plug something in up in my cab and... Uh, all of my cigarette lighter plugs are uh, non-functional anymore. They all burnt out a long time ago. So uh, this will be able to uh, give me power all over the place. So I'm hoping this works out well. I'm pleased so far. Okay, so to turn my attention back to the water filter, uh, everything looks good. It looks like it's working just the way it should. No leaks uh, and all. So. The only issue now is because this top chamber is quite a bit taller than the old one, uh, it now doesn't fit in this spot. I'm not able to close the door uh, because it's just too tall. Uh, so I'm going to need to move the bracket that is holding this whole filter in place uh, down. Um, but I've had some issues with this. I just have this bracket uh, screwed into the uh, sheet metal of the van uh, using just a sheet metal screw and it's not holding very well. One of the screws is actually loose so I need to figure out a better way to do this and that's why I'm at the hardware store here. I think they have something that will work called riv nuts here so if I can figure that out uh, I'll be able to mount this lower and not worry that it's going to fly off of here and uh, break and wet down the back side of the van, although the van could use a good cleaning back here, so maybe that wouldn't be altogether bad. Okay, so I think I found what I need to make a better connection than just a sheet metal screw into the sheet metal of the van, and that is what I have been calling a riv nut, uh, but they're sold under a number of names. This is a rivet that has some threads on the inside, and normally you need a special tool to make the connection, uh, the proper connection with these. Uh, the, the tool actually mushrooms down this uh, rivet and makes a real positive connection with what you're trying to work with. Now, I didn't really want to buy the tool because I only need it for one time and so I was looking on YouTube and I found that there's a way of making your own tool. I can get a tool and I did find a tool yesterday at Harbor Freight. They do sell them but they only sold these blind nuts uh, in uh, made of aluminum and I, I really don't want to make use aluminum uh, rivet nuts because that can lead to electrolysis since I have a steel van. So I'm going to try this, and I found this all out on YouTube, and I think that this will work. Now the funny thing about this is, I was here yesterday and inquiring on these rivet nuts, and uh, one of the gentlemen that worked here at the hardware store told me that these rivet nuts do not work the way that I think that they work. Uh, he also said that he doesn't know how they work, 
but he said that he was right and I was wrong. So I'm curious here to see whether uh, YouTube is right, the hive mind of YouTube, or uh, if this guy is right. So we're gonna see, I'm gonna take this whole thing apart that I have here and see if I can make a fine connection with this rivet nut or riv nut with a homemade tool that I found out how to use on YouTube. Let's find out. Well, I've had some difficulty and setbacks. Uh, I had to go back in and buy another bracket because I was thinking I was going to be able to screw or uh, drill through this bracket to enlarge the holes. I can't do that uh, with the drill and drill bit that I have. So um, I'm a little annoyed right now. Uh, I've also had some drilling issues as well, but I've got the rift nut and the makeshift tool seated. So now I'm just going to try to see if I can get them to tighten up onto the sheet metal of the van. Okay, I almost gave up and went to Harbor Freight and bought the tool. Spending $25 on a tool to do this I think is much better than making up your own tool. Uh, but I've got them to hold. Um, the bottom one I did a little bit better on than the first one I started with, but um, I think better all around than the way I had it before. So I'm just going to go with it and move, move along. That was really difficult. <laughs> okay, I've got it all installed. Got a little shelf I cut out of some plywood and then I just covered it with some aluminum tape and got my bungee cords back up there so hopefully it's going to be more solid than it used to be because that's always been a problem. And then now I've got just stuff everywhere in here that I've got to get put away so this is why I don't like doing work on the van as I uh, spend a ton of time getting stuff out from where it's stored and then I spend a ton of time putting it back away. But I'm gonna do that now. Now that it's 90 degrees and I am overheated, I really haven't eaten anything all day today and I really could use a cup of coffee as well. Not that I want one right now in this heat. No, I, I do actually, I want a cup of coffee right now. Well, if I wanna get that cup of coffee, I'm gonna have to get this stuff put away and get the van cleaned back up. Uh, and maybe eat some food too. That would that would be a good idea. Hey, thanks for watching everybody. I really appreciate it.